Well, welcome back. We're continuing our uh, exploration of what is project management and what we're going to do during this particular video is go back and start looking at that project landscape and then adding some additional details and looking at each of the different intersections between goal and solution. So let's get to that. Um, and right before we do that, each project management life cycle, here you go with the definition, is going to be a sequence of processes that include these phases. And you want to uh, start with scoping, then planning, launching, monitoring, and then closing. So every project management approach, all 12 that we look at, have these five. One of them only goes through each of these processes once. Uh, for many of them, it will be iterative. You'll do it over and over and over again, depending on the project and as you learn more. So um, this is important, this idea of a sequence of processes, and this idea that scoping, planning, launching, monitoring, and closing uh, are included in every single project management approach. It's an important idea. All right, well, here we are. We're back now. And look, we've added some new things here. So let me give you some orientation. As you recall, uh, we had goal and solution before and this idea of clear and not clear uh, before. But now we've put names. Instead of it being quadrant one, two, three, and 4, uh, we put some names in those quadrants. So that TPM down in quadrant 1, that bottom left-hand side, that's going to be your traditional project management. All right. So when you've got a clear goal and you've got a clear solution, you're down there in quadrant one. And that linear and incremental are going to be two different approaches to traditional project management. We'll talk about that a little bit more. And then when we move over to where we've got a clear goal and a not clear solution, the APM, that's going to be your uh, agile. Uh, project management and we've got again two different approaches down there and that's going to be iterative and adaptive. Alright let's move up now. We're now into uh, where we do not have a clear uh, goal and we do not have a uh, clear solution. Alright that's going to be extreme programming. Okay, And um, that's going to be up in quadrant 3, that upper right hand quadrant um, and there's only one approach to looking at that. And then if you look over where you've got a clear solution but not clear goal, uh, that's going to be quadrant four. You've got immerse me. Now, there's some things that should stick out here. If you look over at extreme, it's XPM, and you look over at uh, immerse it's MPX. And there seem to be some interesting characteristics between the two. So quadrant three is actually the word extreme, and quadrant four is the word extreme spelled backwards. Hopefully you picked that up as you were kind of reading through the, uh, the material. Uh, let's now go and look at the distribution of different types of projects. So let's think about this a little bit. What would you think? How many projects out there are traditional? How many are agile? <coughs> How many are extreme and how many are Emertsky? Uh, and here we go. Look at that. Agile is going to account for 70% of the projects that you encounter, uh, according to the course textbook. And only 20% are going to be traditional. And uh, another 10% are going to be in either of the two uh, extreme categories. <coughs> now, the other kind of interesting thing about this and you see it even in the textbook we're going to spend a lot of time on traditional but that traditional only addresses a small percentage uh, of the, the uh, projects. The other thing that the book talks about a bit um, in addition to the kind of distribution of projects and it just happens to be the same number is about 70 percent of projects actually fail um, and <coughs> that's a uh, large number especially for, for paying customers um, so you've got 70% are agile, 20% traditional, 10% extreme, 30% of projects are successful, 70% fail. Now, let's move on and think about this again a little bit more. 
Uh, there's an old saying, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem is a nail. Um, so if you only have experiences doing traditional project management, you're going to use the wrong approach um, in 80% of the projects. And that's why the, the approach that we're taking in this course and the approach you should take to project management is to make sure that you've got the right project management life cycle uh, against the uh, 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 project that you're trying to solve and to make, make sure within that project management life cycle you've got the right approach um, that takes into account the characteristics of the uh, problem that you're trying to solve. And you know one of the uh, the, the best uh, examples of this actually occurred at the beginning of the uh, Afghan conflict. Uh, President Bush had announced we were moving to effect ba effects based warfare, and in uh, effects based warfare, you're looking at all of the instruments of national power and bringing them to bear um, in synergy to have the maximum effect. And it's a great idea, makes lots and lots of sense, but. Uh, at the start of the Afghan war, we had no software that allowed us to do command and control uh, based on effects-based warfare. And so the officers in the field in Afghanistan thought about this and said, we got to build a system. What are we going to do? Well, they only knew one tool. And can you guess what that tool is? Uh, they knew PowerPoint. So they built a uh, PowerPoint deck of more than 500 slides, all hyperlinked together. I guess they were PowerPoint wizards, um, and that's how that was their software solution uh, to command and control for effect-based warfare. It took three people all day just to keep the PowerPoint deck up to date uh, and distributed. And when I got brought into the project, obviously we um, had to uh, change that, use some more modern uh, software programming techniques to deploy a solution. But it is worth mentioning again if every the only tool you have is a hammer, then every problem is going to be a nail. And if you only know traditional project management, then you're going to miss a lot of projects. And a lot of projects are going to fail because you're just fundamentally using the wrong approach. All right, so um, uh, this is a, a, a note from the uh, book, and uh, it talks a little bit about that all projects are different. And you've got to treat all projects as if they're different. Um, okay, let's go forward and now let's dig in a little bit to traditional project management and look at that particular approach. So again, talking down in this quadrant, um, look at the characteristics. You're talking about low complexity because it's a clear goal and a clear solution. You're not expecting a lot of changes in requirements. There are very few scope changes uh, expected. Should be well understood technology infrastructure, low risk. Um, you should have many experienced and skilled uh, project teams and in fact you can probably take a little bit of risk there because uh, uh, you can have some inexperienced players here and still be successful and it's very much a plan driven uh, project okay so th that's kind of some characteristics associated with traditional project management here is one of the approaches a linear PMLC approach, so it's a linear model, and look, we're going through each of those processes, scope, plan, launch, monitor and control, and close the project only once. So you're going to scope it once, plan it once, launch it, monitor it once, and then close it. Okay, it is change intolerant. All right, and there again you'll run into this especially with even very large consulting firms they'll they'll recommend a linear uh, approach um, but the, you have to be very careful here linear approaches are really appropriate only when um, the plan is change intolerant the plan is not going to change the requirements are not going to change and you're going to be able to uh, address the issue by going through each of these phases only once uh, incremental is uh, similar. You're going to scope, plan, launch a increment, not the whole thing, monitor it, and then the client will either decide to close it or launch another increment. Now why would you do this? Well it allows you to get to market faster. So if you're in a race with another competitor and you're trying to get uh, something out to market, then you, you're going to want to use something like this. Notice you're not changing your scope, you're not changing your plan, you're just releasing increments, you're releasing it over time. 
All right, well, guess what? That brings us to the end of uh, this particular uh, video. Boy, we've covered a lot. Um, so we've talked about the different types of projects and the uh, project landscape, I'm talking about agile and traditional and extreme. Uh, we've gone into the linear model actually a bit and talked about two different approaches, incremental and linear. Uh, or traditionalize it should have said and and looked at linear and incremental within that approach and uh, we also looked at some characteristics you know 70 percent of projects are agile 70 percent of projects fail uh, and the uh, value that uh, looking at a project and making sure you've got the right project management life cycle and the right project management approach um, uh, being brought to bear so that the project has a greater chance of being successful well, very good. This uh, brings us to the end of this video. And uh, keep on studying, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video as we continue to explore what is project management.